Paintball Nerd. All right. Today's guest on Paintball Nerd's futuristic forecast interview, we have an individual who's been playing paintball since 2002. In 2012, he got his master's degree in computer science. In 2021, he started working for Meta. Since 2018, he's been working on Snapshot VR, the world's first virtual reality paintball game. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show, Jesse Keo. Hey, what's up, Zizek? Thanks for having me on, man. How you doing? Yeah, man. Good, good. Thanks for coming on. For sure. So, working on some exciting stuff, right? Absolutely, yeah. Um, it's been a wild year for Snapshot, and I think technology and paintball in general. Um, but it's been our best year yet. We've been working on this thing for a few years, and it just keeps getting better. So, um, we're we're having a good time with it. So, so virtual reality. And, and I assume that what you do at Meta is also virtual reality, right? That's right. Yeah. So I, I work in virtual reality software at Meta uh, on very different types of software than what we do with Snapshot. But um, yeah, there is some relationship in that. That's both my professional passion and what I do kind of uh, nights and weekends for Snapshot. So let's talk a little bit about virtual reality in general. I mean, metaverse and that's the reason why facebook changed the name to meta is because they're creating this thing called metaverses which where, where everyone is going to be interacting in this virtual space right that's one way of looking at it yeah so in my personal opinion separate from any opinion of metas uh, i think the goal is to basically build the next platform for social interaction so you can think about how we've gone from written communication being the primary form of communication to asynchronous to synchronous uh, text and chat and video. And then we're gonna have a platform that's truly immersive and interactive where you can feel co-present with someone across the world, which is different from how you might uh, feel on a 2D screen today. Wow, interesting. So I wonder how that's going to affect paintball. <laughs> Well, we're, we're playing around with that, aren't we, uh, over at Giant Scam. So I, I can see it going a couple of different ways. You know, we, we see, I don't want to call them competitors, others in um, the industry that are looking to make hyper-realistic versions of paintball sims and paintball games and things like that. And I think that's one route. Uh, at Giant Scam with Snapshot, we try to take a step back and not limit ourselves by what's possible in the physical world with paintball. Um, and apply a little bit of a different aesthetic to it in the hopes that it attracts more than just people that already love paintball. So hmm. if you make a paintball game, I think you're, you're going to win most of the paintball crowd. If you make a great projectile shooter that feels like playing competitive paintball, I think you have a good shot of attracting people that have never played paintball in real life that come in and try it and love the feeling of it and then get convinced to go play paintball and they become paintball players. So, so tell us about Snapshot VR. I mean, obviously, this is a virtual reality paintball game, but tell us a little bit about, about it. How did how did you come up with the idea? Yeah, um, good question. So we 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 as Giant Scam. Most people know it as me and Tanner. So me and Tanner are kind of the faces of Giant Scam in the Snapshot community. Uh, we actually created the company. Um, it was me and a friend named Charlie. Me and Charlie grew up playing video games together. He lived in LA. I lived in Nashville. We met in person in college. And then uh, we started the company in 2017 and built a, an unrelated game called Chop It. When Chop It was done and we were looking for the next thing, um, you know, growing up playing paintball and, you know, getting a little bit older and busier with grad school and, and life, uh, I wasn't going to the field as often. And um, I pretty much said, I want to be able to play paintball in my living room. Uh, mm -hmm. I want to get all my guys that were, you know, I was playing events with 10 years ago that aren't playing anymore. Uh, I want to get them headsets and I want to jump on a couple of nights a week and be able to play like we used to. And um, that's kind of where it started is I knew I wanted it to be multiplayer. I knew I wanted the gunfighting mechanics to be as realistic as possible. And then um, I kind of let Tanner run wild with the creative vision. So we have this futuristic neon kind of environment and we, uh, we can do things that you can't do in real paintball. But a lot of people choose to play it as if it's competitive paintball. They choose the airball maps. They choose the X-ball mode in 
BPS and uh, and they run it as if they were at the field. Hmm. So you mentioned that you can do some things that you can't do in real paintball. Like what what are some of those things? So we we support um, like all different types of uh, like objects that you can put in there, not just air ball bunkers. So we experiment with that a lot. Um, we have uh, bots in the game, so you can play alone. You can come in and play by yourself. Uh, you don't have a hopper in your face, which, surprise, not that many people complain about not having a giant piece of plastic in your viewport when you're trying to play a game. Whereas mm -hmm. if you were pursuing something like an ultra-realistic game, right, you would have a hopper and you'd be loading pods, but um, we're able to remove some of the friction in that case. Gotcha. Interesting. So, so you've eliminated the hopper. Have you eliminated loading? We still have loading, but uh, it's just contact based. So you press a button to spawn a pod in your offhand and you touch that pod to the gun and it reloads immediately. So the only way or the only reason that we keep that feature in is to break up the gunfighting a little bit so that you still have mm. to pay attention to your ammo count uh, and you still have to do an action to continue gunfighting. So you don't have to continue to slain the entire game. But uh, otherwise, we wanted to make it very snappy. Now, are there other virtual reality paintball games? Kind of. Um, it depends on the definition. So we we see things that I think are heading in the right direction, like Grit Paintball, if you know the, the guys over at Deadbolt Custom Works. I think they're in New Zealand. They were the first people to build custom silicon for paintball markers that would trigger a VR controller's trigger. So you could you know aim around and uh, snap shoot and practice with an actual paintball gun. The difference there is it's single player only, uh, so you can't jump in and play with your friends. I think they may mm -hmm. be heading that direction and you know we, we work with those guys and uh, we'll be interested to see what they do there. Otherwise, you have games that call whatever their version of a first person shooter is a paintball game. So there's games like Rec Room where they're kind of like, you know, run around and pick up different weapons and shoot each other. They call that rec room paintball, but it, it doesn't try to emulate the feeling of playing competitive paintball. So this is the first that I know of anyway, that's truly built for coming in playing full matches against each other. So this is the most realistic version of virtual paintball. I would say so. Yeah. It feels the most like playing paintball. So do you envision snapshot VR as a method to coexist with real paintball? Or is this something that's going to be different? I think it coexists and I think it does so pretty harmoniously right now. I think uh, we have a lot of our player base, our competitive paintball players, whether that means local or regional or national level. And while it's not one to one, you're not going to come in and play snapshot and that be your only method of practice and become a pro paintball player. But I think it does, you know, it gets your, your kind of body feel and your uh, your EQ or in your paintball IQ to where it needs to be if you want to to level up. It, ha it has enough situational similarity to real paintball that people are using it and and coming back to the discord and saying, hey, you know, I've, I've been playing for the last three months. I just won my first tournament or, you know, whatever it might be in real life. So we're seeing people use it as a practice tool. So are the, the physics accurate or the paintballs flying at 300 feet per second and arcing and dropping? Yeah, 300 feet per second. We simulate the gravity drop. Uh, we don't, the only difference is we don't reduce velocity of the paintball over its lifespan. So whereas in a paintball, you see that arcs start to slow down towards the end of the shot, it's, it maintains a constant speed and snapshot. That's really just for simplifying the physics, making the calculations a little bit cheaper so that we can run on hardware like the Oculus Quest. But um, it's, it's close enough that most people feel pretty accurate when they go to the field, come back home and compare. So how do you think paintball, I mean, let's just say at the professional level, how do you think paintball at the professional level can use snapshot VR as a tool? Yeah. So, I mean, um, I would never claim any of uh, Marcelo's success, obviously. <laughs> He's been a great for a long, long time before snapshot existed. Uh, Marcelo is a big snapshot player and a big snapshot fan. So we have seen him and others in the pro community come in and try it out and report back that it feels good and that they're enjoying it. Um, so I, I think it's a practice tool in a way, just in terms of if you want more reps at home, 
especially if you want to practice a layout, especially a blind layout. Um, you know, a blind layout in, re in real life gets released 24 hours to a week, you know, before the event. Uh, we can have that layout in snapshot in less than 30 minutes and people can start spinning points on it. So we see that a lot with different leagues. Um, something that I would like to see happening is uh, for paintball leagues using snapshot as a test bed for what changes they might want to make to their format or to their layouts. You know, if you think about a, a regional league or even a national league, they could put together three layouts they think might be great fits for the next event. They could run them in snapshot for a week. We could pull all the data for every layout and they could know how each layout plays and what they want the next tournament to feel like. Um, I would love to see the data being used, I think, more professionally. How do you think the team could use this to actually prepare for competition? Yeah. So, I mean, other than uh, getting on together, you know, everyone in their headset and playing playing matches together, whether they're playing casually or in one of our esports leagues, um, we do some data visualizations that we release to the community. I think me and you looked at a couple of them uh, when we were at Cup together. But we can do some really interesting things with the data. We can um, we can show every lane that's possible on the layout. We can wow. uh, the things that we typically like to release are based on actual match data. So for if you take the World Cup layout this year, for example, before the event happened, we had almost a thousand matches played on the World Cup layout. Yeah. And uh, what we would do is instead of trying to do predictive analysis where we're finding like what's every possible lane, we actually log positional information about every shot that's shot in snapshot. So where the person, the shooter was, where the person that got hit was, where the projectile originated from out of the barrel, where it collided with the opposing player, a lot of other accessory information. And we can do things like, okay, <clears throat> what were the most successful lanes, period, that were shot from the break, from a particular bunker, into the snake, into the Dorito side, wherever, you know, wherever we want to hone in and focus, we can aggregate all of that data and visualize it and see almost like a heat map where are the most kills happening across the field. Um, we can take that a step further and say for its particular bunkers, you know, let's say like Dorito one. Let's say take every kill that's happened from Dorito 1 and everyone who's gotten shot while in Dorito 1. And then we can do a, a color analysis of that to say, how successful is this bunker or how safe is this bunker? Is this bunker so advantageous that we're getting 10x the kills than deaths out of it? So it's safe and a great attacking bunker. Um, so yeah, I think uh, these are some of the things we've scratched the surface with. But you can imagine with that type of data what you might be able to learn about not only a particular layout, but the, the game as a whole. So let me understand this right. So your game can predict what lanes are most effective to shoot off the break, what bunkers are safest to go to based off people playing the game, correct? Exactly. So not, okay, not how much guessing, yeah. Exactly. What how much yeah. artificial intelligence is is involved, if any? Very little. So you can think of it more as data analysis than data science. So we only take okay. real data. We don't create any fake data as part of the data set. And then we aggregate real data to figure out what the uh, answers are. Now, let me ask you this. Do you anticipate in the future there being any integration of artificial intelligence to just take past information from past games that have been played and say, okay, because this lane here is this wide, the likelihood of someone getting shot there just based on past data is high. Yeah, that's absolutely doable. It's, uh, it's not something <laughs> oh we're putting gosh, time dude. into right now, but again, right? Like it, with enough interest from the community, we invest more in this part of snapshot. But hy hypothetically, like in, in the future, you could upload a field layout and using artificial intelligence, determine what bunkers are the safest, which, what bunkers have the most advantage and which ones, you know, what were the best to shoot off the break is hypothetically. You, yeah, you can come up with predictive data that will tell you those things. Um, I like that we're able to collect so much data so quickly that we can give concrete answers to those yeah. questions. But yeah. the um, the idea of building an AI to 
try to get ahead of the game even that much further than we already are uh, is definitely an interesting path. So how could this not be the new standard for any coach, any professional coach that wants to scout the field? Um, that's a that's a great question. As we've seen more adoption in the paintball community, I hope that it trends that way, whether it's on our product or a competing product that does it better. You know, I, I just want the technology to exist. I, um, I built a lot of it and I think it can be improved on, whether it's by me or by somebody else. But um, I, I do think, and this is kind of a pat myself on the back statement, but I think if you're not playing snapshot VR, then you're probably at a disadvantage, especially for you know layouts that aren't getting a, a ton of spins before the event. Uh, if you only have a couple of days to set up the field at your local field and get some reps in, let's say you might get 20, 30 matches in a good weekend. Um, we are seeing hundreds of matches a day on on new layouts that get added to Snapshot. So you can get in and play for eight hours if you want on stop. It's um, and again, right? Like I'm not trying to claim that you're going to go to the field and everything's going to be set up exactly how we set your field up and all that. But uh, the situations that you encountered when you were playing virtually on that field are going to be similar to the situations you're going to encounter in real life. So how does one enjoy snapshot VR? How, what, what gear do you need? Where do you need to go? How do you get it? So it's virtual reality only. Uh, you can play just on a computer if you just want to walk fields. Like you can buy the game, load up with a mouse and keyboard and walk around. We don't let you play the full experience uh, with mouse and keyboard because it's meant to be immersive and embodied and in, in VR. Um, so the two ways you do it, if you already have a gaming computer or you're interested in having a gaming PC in general, you can get what's called a PC tethered headset. So those are like the Oculus Rifts and HTC Vives of the world. Um, and then if you want to play standalone, so if you, you don't have that gaming computer, you just want to buy an all-in-one device and play um, on that headset by itself then the Oculus Quest 2 is definitely the kit to get at the moment. You can get one for $399. You don't need a computer. You don't need a fancy phone. You can buy the game directly inside the headset, so you don't have to have any wires or cables or anything like that. And then you can just go stand in your living room, no external sensors or anything, and you can start playing. Awesome. How does it... I, I, and I've never played virtual reality anything, so I don't know how this mm. works, a first-person shooter, but... So if you've got a headset on, how do you run around? Yeah, yeah, great question. So I got gear all over this office, but so here's an example of a headset. So this is one of the wireless models that you can just throw on and walk over there and, and you're good to go. And then on your controllers, you'll have uh, joysticks here and, and buttons for different functions. And mm -hmm. you can choose in our game between three different, what we call locomotion modes or ways, ways to move around. The most popular by far is just kind of like your, you know, your PlayStation controller joystick where yeah. you're free movement. But um, a decent number of people get motion sick in VR. It's just the nature of VR and where it's at today. So we offer some more uh, nausea friendly modes as well. So one's called rails, which is where you click a button and it draws a pointer to somewhere on the ground. And when you let go, it'll move you kind of on rails on a path to that next position. That makes it a little bit easier for some people to handle. And then uh, even if that's too much, we have a, a mode called Puppet, which is actually the first mode we ever wrote for Snapshot, which is that same method, click a button, point somewhere on the ground, but then it, uh, it moves your body out from where you're at, like from where your camera is. So your body runs to that next place and you can triangulate that body in your position and still shoot while you're running and things like that. Mm -hmm. But when the, uh, the body gets to that next spot then it just snaps your camera, into where that body is. So you never gotcha. feel the artificial movement of the camera. This is really cool, man. It sounds like an exciting game to play. Like even if you don't like playing paintball in real life, this is a, this is a fun game to play, but the, the, I'll tell you the, the, I guess the, the thought of having a tool that you can use at the highest level of paintball in the virtual space is pretty amazing as well. Exactly. Yeah, I, uh, I want to satisfy both markets, right? Like I'm a paintball player and I, I build it with paintball in mind first. But we have 
a, a decent sized community that's airsoft players, like speed QB players that mm. come in and, and this is the closest thing, you know, for them to what they like to do on the weekends. And then we have a decent group that's never played paintball in their life. They just love VR shooters and, uh, and they come in and play and to see, like we have an esports league, it's run separately called the VR ML. And uh, we see people from other competitive VR games come in and try out Snapshot and they end up forming teams. So when we have leagues, we have seasons. We uh, just finished season three. You might have a full team of people that have never played paintball versus a full team of like D1 and above paintball players. Um, but they're finding ways to be on equal footing because you know, these guys are really great at aiming in VR and understand the locomotion mechanics of VR really well. And these guys are great at the fundamentals of paintball and like how do those things balance when they play each other. Yeah. So where do you anticipate snapshot VR and say, well, I know, I know technology, the way that it, it, it grows is, is exponentially. So let's, let's give it a short timeline. Let's sure. say a year from today, where do you see snapshot VR? Yeah, I, I mean, I think we'll continue to support the latest hardware. So the hope always in the VR market is the hardware continues to get more accessible, lighter, um, you know, lower form factor so that it's easier to wear and you can wear it for longer. Um, the more accessible it gets, the bigger the community becomes because it becomes the thing that, you know, someone can ask their parents for for Christmas as opposed to something you have to save up for a year for. Uh, it kind of becomes the same price as, you know, the next generation console as opposed to a full gaming PC plus the VR hardware. So, I mean, my biggest hope is the community continues to grow at the rate that it has. Um, you know, we have thousands of players now and um, it's taken time to build that community and to build trust in the paintball community that we've made something that's not gimmicky and that that is fun. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, Tanner and I, we both have full time jobs. We do giant scam on nights and weekends. So we we put in the time that we can. A lot of our time goes into bug fixing because, you know, more players, they discover new issues or have little feature requests or tweaks that they would like. So we prioritize, you know, those as much as we can. And then um, then we get down to kind of fundamentals beyond that or foundational work, bigger work that we can do without disrupting the community. I think some of the things that we'll see there, we'll see um, improvements to our networking. So we want our networking, our networking to feel crisper. We want uh, it to feel like if you shot someone and you saw it hit them, that that's guaranteed that it's a kill. It's not always the case today because the server maybe didn't see that same hit or not all of the, the players in the room, oh, right? Saw that just same like hit. refing. <laughs> exactly. So there's no wiping mechanic, but there's a, a bounce mechanic in that. Right. Uh, yeah, and that the networking is never guaranteed. So we'll invest in in some things like that. Then content-wise, I think we hope to offer a lot more cosmetics. Right now, you can unlock different masks and guns and things like that. Um, we have some interest from some brands and in, in the industry that would like to put some products in there. And where 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 it makes sense, we can support things like that. Again, I don't think we want to build a, a hyper-realistic version of a lot of these things, but. We want to give people things to unlock and think more things to do essentially. So outside of giving people more, more things to do in the game, it sounds like the, the growth of snapshot VR is really contingent on the wide adoption of VR altogether. And what you're saying is that adoption is contingent on the, the comfortability of the headsets and the advancement of the hardware. I think that's true for every VR game in existence right now. Like you, you have the few outliers like Beat Saber, for example, like almost every VR player is probably going to own or play Beat Saber. It's like this pinnacle um, experience in VR. Otherwise, you have a lot of developers battling for a very small community, like a very small user base. Um, so we can convince a lot of people to play Snapshot and, and we've done like I would consider Snapshot a success in that we've been live for over two years without folding and that we continue to have more and more people play the game every month, which not a lot of VR games can say. Um, but, you know, and it may be a while before we have something like 10,000 concurrent players, right? Which is like nothing if you look at something like Call of Duty or a console game, but it's, that's a huge number for VR. So, um the thing that's important to me right now is that the community sustains itself, that people continue to play every day, and that when someone buys the game and jumps on, 
they're not the only person online. But beyond that, um, you know, it's going to be tough to get to those really, really big numbers. Well, well, certainly what you would need is there to be a VR headset in, in every household. And right. right now, that's just that's just not the case. You have yeah, some yeah. gamers that are, that are going to buy a VR headset for the purpose of gaming. But, you know, what what Meta is doing with the metaverse is, you know, that's eventually going to get a, a VR headset on on everyone's head that I would assume that that is the goal. So in your professional opinion, how, how soon do you see that integrating into society? When do you think there's going to be a VR headset in every home? And how do you think it's going to get there? I'm probably not the right person to predict it, honestly. Um, hmm. I would say, you know, the last milestone in technology in, in VR, in my opinion, was the Quest 2, where, you know, we went from what seemed more like a, uh, a hobbyist or enthusiast um, hobby, you know, VR is, was very new and very expensive to having wider adoption. So we, we really saw exponential growth with things like the Quest 2. I think it'll take another headset that is that next leap in technology and at a cheaper price point. And I think that's the tough one, right? Like it, VR is not cheap to make. It's hard to yeah. sell at a cheap price point. But it, it has to go the way of the mobile phone, right? Where it, it goes from being this thing that is kind of guarded um, and only available to a certain tier of people. And it uh, it has to become something that anyone can get. Maybe not everyone can get the best version of it, but anyone can get a version of it and have basically the access that they need to have. Hmm. So can you tell us about what Meta is working on as far as something like that? Of course not. No, <laughs> yeah, I uh, appreciate the question, but um, not much I can say there. And uh, you know, I I take really good care of separating what I do at Giant Scam from what I do at Meta because um, we want to make sure that there's there's no conflicts there and that Meta is represented fairly and that I'm able to to continue what I'm doing on the side. Awesome. Well, it's super exciting, Jesse. I, I can't wait to try out Snapshot VR. And we appreciate your your time here today. Is there anything else that you wanna that you wanna add and share for the paintball community? I would just say, you know, um, if you don't have a headset yet, find a friend that does. Tell them to go to snapshotvr.com and uh, and grab a copy. It's only twenty bucks, one time fee. It's not a live service game. We don't charge people money after you buy the game, anything like that. Um, and jump in. You know, the community's hot. Hundreds of players are playing every day. We have something like 250 layouts already been added by the community in the game. So there's a good chance your local or regional um, league already has some some maps that you may be familiar with. And um, yeah, I'd say give it a shot. You know, I think some people are hesitant because they they don't understand what it's going to feel like when they they play paintball in VR. But the community has, has spoken, so to speak. And, you know, we see people that are very familiar with paintball at very high levels that are loving the game. So, I, you know, I think most people that enjoy paintball will as well. Who, who that you're aware of besides Marcelo is, is on the game? Uh, good question. So we, we hear rumblings. Like a lot of these people don't uh, expose themselves, right? They, they don't name themselves sure. their real names in the game and, and things Makes like sense. that. But uh, we get pinged on Discord all the time from, you know, people in the HK crew, people in the Dynasty crew, um, you know, other pro teams and, and pro brands. And uh, I'll just say that uh, behind, you know, password protected servers, uh, it's, it's pretty common to find a, a group of pros that have jumped in. Cool. All right. Thanks, Jesse. Cool. Thank you very much, man. See ya.